90% of what we call the Canadian population knows nothing about us. They 90% has probably never sat next to an Indian, let alone talked to them. A hidden history by the Canadian government of what happened to First Nations people in this country. It's finally being told thanks to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And Okanagan Indian Band elder Eric Mitchell says it can no longer be ignored. You have three choices when you go out the door, now that I've shared this with you. You could, number one, throw it in the garbage as you go out. You could, number two, take a look at it, put it in your pocket, think about it later. Or you can take a good look at it right now and figure out what it is that your part is going to be to help make sure it never happens again or to change things so that it is better for our people. And I said, the one thing you can't do anymore is say, I don't know. After seven years of hearings and testimony from thousands of witnesses by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it is finally being said that the policy pursued by Canadian governments and churches was a cultural genocide against this country's Aboriginal people for a period of 150 years. And now, it's time for a new era of truth and understanding. You know, basically, Indian people know all of that truth all along. Um, the thing that we're waiting for is, uh, is uh, you know, it's estimated that there was 50,000 children that died in them schools and nobody knows where they're at. And uh, we're waiting for the government to release the documents that might tell us where they're buried. Mitchell will wait alongside many others for the answer to where the children are buried and they will wait for a response on the recommendations by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. There are 94 recommendations but there are some that are considered an easy win such as restoring Aboriginal names, annual accountability, Aboriginal education and a new curriculum for Canada's history in schools. And so I would say that unlike the government if people could start viewing us not as competitors for the resources and the land, but as partners and equals in building this country, if they could do that, then all the rest is going to happen.